Hey, what's up, beautiful hey, people? What's up, people of the beautiful? <laughs> I used to say that back in the day. But hi, welcome back to another episode of Bailcast. Um, I'm happy to announce that this Bailcast is brought to you by Skillshare, um, Manscaped, um, Noom. So I'm really stoked to share all those products um, and services with you guys. But first, we're going to talk something that is deep down and personal. Yeah, near and dear to our hearts. Yeah. Um, so you want to take, yeah, take, take it away? Take it away. Take it away, Bart. Um, so recently, you know, we're, we have a pretty tight group of friends. We got uh, Aunt Christina, Casey and Tiff, Steve and Nikki, Joe and Jess, uh, David and Mariel. Mariel, not so much because she doesn't work with us on a regular basis, but through David, she's extremely close. And um, within our group, we've, we, we help each other deal with a lot of uh, couple issues. And, you know, at, at any given time, you guys have seen it through the vlogs, um, like we've shared some dark moments. Joe and Jess have shared some dark moments, but people go through a lot of dark moments sometimes. Or couples, yeah. Couples. And then there's times where you actually consider breaking up or divorce. Or like to me, divorce and breaking up is the same thing. Yeah. It's just a different word for it. it well, really there's matter. just more complications in paperwork and property split and all that shit. Yeah, but the, the, the purest intent of it is separation. So there's, uh, and, and no one wants to see that happen. Yeah, and I get a lot of messages. I get a shit ton of DMs and they're like long paragraphs and I'm sorry I can't reply, but it's along what we're just talking about now. Yeah. And uh, one thing that Steve and Nikki actually shared with us that I thought was so cool <clears throat> was um, I think for both of them, because they're very emotionally intelligent and very articulate and vulnerable to each other. They're awesome. Um, they experienced their really dark place a year into our relationship. I think when um, people have strong egos and- Which is everyone. There's people with Even, very strong- Oh, I see. Because if you're ego and vulnerability, they're, they're opposite. Oh, I see, I see. So Steve and Nikki, because yeah. they're able to be vulnerable, they're able to put their ego aside. Yeah, but they're for, so fucking cool. But uh, like people like me and Jill, for example, our <laughs> egos are very strong. So what we could have squashed in year one, yeah. Um, and anxiety that plays into it. Um, what we could have squashed in year one, we didn't really- meet until like year five year six yeah and so we experienced our deep down darkest place um then yeah and one of the things that steve and nikki shared with us that helped them get through it is this pulling arrows concept you want to go into the point yeah arrows concept? so um so this was this this was uncovered to us you and i bart and myself kind of after we got out of our dark place but basically um arrows are are just imagine an arrow and the person that you're in the relationship with they shoot you in the heart with this arrow so this arrow stays in your heart it's painful it's something that you can't shake off. it's kind of like a broken mirror concept it's like it's like the person that's supposed to be taking care of you and loving you um hurting you the deepest and the most and it's something that that you kind of carry with you and it manifests itself in the relationship in so many different other ways. Like uh, an example of that would be like if, if Pa Bear, um, I've told him time and time again, hey, I like a clean sink, please leave a clean sink. If I have these arrows that, have, that I've carried for years of something that he's done to me, even if I'm, uh, uh, I'm unaware that I even have this arrow because I'm just not thinking about it, that him leaving a dirty dish, I I'm gonna blow up on him. But it's never really about the dish. Yeah. So they came up with this thing where, okay, we're going to sit down. And the goal of this arrow pulling out and getting rid of is to ultimately forgive for any misunderstanding, any wrongdoing, um, just any badness that you feel in your heart that that person caused you, regardless of the reason. Um, the goal being that you forgive, you get past it, and you start a brand new chapter. Now, also, this is something that once you pull the arrows out, it should never be brought up again. The objective is we're healthier, we're better, we're gonna rebuild. And it's not something that you can do time and time and time again, because that just kind of defeats the whole purpose. So it's those one-off type things. Yeah, arrow is one of those things where <clears throat> your partner does to you that cuts you so deep that over long periods of time, you're not able to forgive and it keeps resurfacing. Yeah. And because of that, um, your, your relationship is never able to go back to that blank slate and, um, it just keeps coming up and all there's new, more and more arrows that keep adding up. And then now your relationship, it eventually gets to that dark, dark, dark place. Yeah. I don't know if this is something I could have done, um, 
I guess I just didn't care about anyone in the past like this. But I, I, ego. I, oh, it's ego. Oh, ego. Um, I thought you said you go. No, no, that's ego. So <clears throat> yeah, I didn't care about it in the past enough to want to like work on it. Like I didn't, I didn't ever feel in a relationship that I wasn't at fault at some point. But I just was like, I don't think I care enough about like rebuilding this shit. Like, it, yeah, it was one of those, and it mainly like my relationships mainly ended because I was like so bored, and I don't know what that was. Maybe it's just me growing and, and we're just kind of growing in different directions. I think you have arrows with yourself. <gasps> what? Yeah, because those are really strong defense mechanisms. Yeah, maybe even in, in the selection of my significant other. For sure. Yeah. Because the fact that you're willing to commit time to them. I know. And they were long. Like I'm talking about minimum, like like two years minimum yeah so the 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 willingness to be in a long-term committed relationship spend money on them spend time on them have their physical body part insert yours wow 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 there's that sounds disgusting to be able to do that and for you to go i'm bored like you know there's there's yeah. something you're really trying your ego is trying to hide I think it was my inner honus. I was trying to battle my inner honus. It's trying to hide your heart. Like it's trying to hide the vulnerability. Papa's not trying to play right now. No no, no it's like <laughs> cuz uh cuz you're trying to dance around a subject. I'm not. I'm not. You're not I, being vulnerable. Well, so keep in mind this is back when I'm like 18. Like I'm not thinking I never wanted a serious relationship. I just wanted to then just why, why were they all three years long? Because I think I was trying to like suppress my inner honus. Because I that's, think that's what I'm trying to talk about. Oh, is that the arrow? That's the arrow you have with yourself. Oh, okay. Yeah, because whatever whatever that is, whatever your defense mechanism is, whatever the it, the inner honus. Yeah, it, absolutely. I was just raised not to think that that's bad to sleeping around and exploring, um, with consent and with the other partner knowing that this that you just don't want anything. That I was taught that that's bad. Because you could be single too. Why weren't you? Why why wasn't that a consideration? I was lonely. I wanted I wanted someone next to me. Yeah, and it was fun. I mean, I could have had girlfriends around and stuff, but it's not the same as a guy, you know. Yeah. So you really wanted to be an inner hoe. I mean, you really wanted to be a hoe. No, I think I'm I'm exaggerating the inner hoe part, but I definitely um, if I didn't if I wasn't raised Catholic and and you know, that small town mentality that my parents had of like, Ooh, what are the neighbors going to say then? And if they were very open about like, Hey, you should, you should like, like sex is a part of growing up and life and stuff. Just know that with sex, at least for a woman or most women, not all women, um, you will be, you know, it, it, you're very vulnerable. You might develop feelings, like make sure to like, distinguish that this is just for pleasure this is or this is i want to get serious um but using it as a tool and not an end-all be-all you know and and for me it was like an end-all be-all because it's like you gotta you gotta be a virgin when you get married so all of those things um played into like my my selection of this like not decision making but i guess so decision making of the guy that i wanted to spend time with and then um ultimately that leading to sex but then me going like, oh man, like, like I can already tell that the relationship's not going to be good, but maybe the sex was fine, you know, or, or I got, I got to know them enough where I'm like, I trust this person. They're a good person. Um, and I don't mind, you know, having sex with this person. Whereas with another, with someone else or just kind of jumping around, I, I wouldn't feel again, because of how I was raised, I wouldn't feel right. Just sleeping around casually. Not that there's anything wrong, but I just, you just didn't feel right doing it. My, my mind just wouldn't allow it. And did you have this realization then and there where you're like, hmm, I'm not really feeling this guy, but I also don't know what to do. And I'm also kind of horny. And it is kind of fun. We watch a movie every yeah, now and then. Yeah, 100%. A lot of the times. So you knew it. It, wasn't, is it. it wasn't like after you had a better relationship and you look back and you're like, oh, actually, I wasn't really in it. No, I think you So were, while you were in it, you, you knew you weren't in it. Yeah, I knew I wasn't in it. And I always justified it. So in the beginning... Uh, before the relationship that I had, that relationship before ours, anything before that, I just justified it as, um, I don't, I just don't see myself as being someone that's going to marry anyone. Cause I just was like, Oh, I'm so hard to deal with. I'm very indecisive. Like I have high expectations. Like there were just so many things that, that I just justified me staying there as, okay, well until I'm kind of over it. But I just knew that it wasn't going to be a forever thing. 
Oh, I yeah. see. And then with the relationship before, the one. So you never were really committed in those nah, ones, Nah, huh? never. Never and really. And you never felt guilty or like felt weird about it? Um, I mean, I guess I did a little bit. Because they would be like, oh, I love you and this and that. And, and I'd play into it just because that's, this is sounding so fucked up. But that's just kind of the thing you do. You kind of just, you're supposed to do that, right? Yeah. And it was fun, the idea of having this like happy relationship and having someone love you in the notes the and Valentine's like, Valentine's days. Yeah. Like, like that idea, yeah. that concept is really fun. Yeah. But so I guess I was always playing. I think we talked about this in a separate podcast where it was like the Disney, like she lived happily ever after type concept. Yeah. And then my mind, my intellect, I guess, or the non-emotional part of my brain going like, stop dude. Like this isn't going to go anywhere. Mm. Yeah. yeah. I had that too. I think that's when, Unlike you, my relationships have never gone past four months. Damn, that's tight. Because <laughs> I, think, I think like, uh, like for example, I think my first committed girlfriend um, uh, when I was in a junior, well, my second committed girlfriend. Yep. When I was a junior in um, high school, uh, we, I think when you're, you're just horny all the time, you got like 50 boners a day. And then... I didn't think she was that attractive, but she really liked me. And so the way that she's the first girlfriend in high school. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. And the well, second girlfriend in high school, but the way she looked at me and the way she talked about me, it was like, I was a God. So it made me feel really good. Yeah. And then I think after a month, I already knew like, it's not gonna work. I don't know, but you're so horny and it's so fun. And then it's kind of like, it's kind of fun to play into the pretend and be like cute with each other and go watch movies. Mm-hmm, and like, mm-hmm. it's kind of fun to do that. that's what you're that. supposed to do. Yeah. And then so the whole time when you're, when you're feeling it, you're like, is this love? I think this is love. I guess it's love. I never really, I mean, I don't feel this way about all these other girls around me. Yeah. I guess she's kind of like a best friend that's a girl, but I have a real best friend right now. Yeah. And then, but then the anxiety would start getting to me. You know, I'm like, wait, I don't actually like, I think if I break up at any time, I could be okay with it. And uh, so that would get to me. And I'm like, wait, if I can break up either way, she breaks up with me, I break up with them at any time and I can be okay with it. I'm like, I don't think we have something strong here. Damn. You were thinking at that at 16, 15, 15. Yeah. <laughs> well, cause I was also in a gang. What does that, what does that mean? How does that correlate? Well, so like commitment and loyalty is a huge thing. Oh, I see. Like, I see. If, I see. Uh, if the I home. like, what? No, because if a homie left the gang, you kick his you, ass. You kill that motherfucker. Aye, aye, aye. Right? And if someone's disloyal. I don't say right like if I know. Oh, I have no well, idea. If someone's disloyal to you, like you're like, fuck that fool and his family. Ouch. I'm going to beat up his little brother just because I saw him. I'll beat up his dad just because I saw him. You know, it's like, yeah. it's a huge thing. So for me, I'm like, if I don't feel this way about, like, me and her are supposed to be our own little gang. Yeah. And if I'm cool with her stepping out of the gang at any time, I'm like, are we really a gang? Yeah. So it would bug me all the time. And then so I did probably probably one of the worst acts I did in any of my relationship is with that girlfriend. Uh, four months in on our anniversary, I called her and I was like, happy anniversary. Uh-oh. And I was like, I think we need to talk about something. I broke up with her then and there. On. You suck. How traumatizing. But I you're know. 15. I won't hold and, it against And it me. was three months of going back and forth if I should end it or not. That was Damn. the thing. Yeah. That's crazy. Well, right now we're going to do a little ad break because I want to talk about our sponsors. Okay. So for our first sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community. I absolutely love it because anything in the creative field or in the technological field, technology, technological, technology Mm -hmm. field, I don't know, business field, um, anything you're trying to learn within those realms, it's there for you. So if you want to learn about like digital marketing or email marketing or being productive with your time or what something I'm currently using is interior design. So it teaches you um, and there's so many videos. There's thousands and thousands of courses on Skillshare. And um, when I was looking at the interior design, all I did was I go to the search bar, I go interior design and then it tells you like it breaks it down like crazy. So to say, okay, do you want interior design um, Um, for framing, like how you're going to put pictures up or um, how you're going to match the furniture with the painting on the walls. So that's something I'm currently using because we did buy a house. Um, And I absolutely love it. Super intuitive. Um, There's videos, there's video components. I I love it. I love it. Uh, And for you guys, 
today. So join the millions of students already learning on Skillshare today with a special offer just for you guys. You guys get to get two months of Skillshare for free. In two months, you guys can literally take a new class every single day for 60 days. That's eight weeks. Yes, that's beautiful, you guys, and it's free. Uh, that's right, Skillshare is offering Bailcast listeners two months of unlimited access to thousands of classes for free. To sign up, go to Skillshare.com slash Bail, B-E-A-W. Again, go to Skillshare.com slash Bail. To start your two months now, that's Skillshare.com slash Bail, B-E-A-W. Don't miss out, get your brain working. Okay, well, thank you to Skillshare for that. Um, but going back to how for three months, he already knew that it was just not going to work out. I mean, I guess when it comes to high school stuff, I mean, you're, you're, you're still growing, you're still developing. I know we carry arrows and we have all that stuff in us, but I don't really, I don't know if I really count that stuff. I do, be, I am a firm believer in uh, arrows with yourself and then also arrows. Uh, like that, that we carry them? Or what do you mean, firm believer of what? I'm a firm believer that people carry arrows to themselves yeah. that affect future relationships. Mm, absolutely. And arrows that they carried from prior relationships that aren't worked out that they carry into the new relationship. Mm. I'm a firm believer of that. Because a lot of people, they think, you know. Give me an example. Um, so f one example, which I shared with you when I was on ecstasy. <laughs> what? <laughs> this is fucking sounds funny. Was when? Um, so, do we want to give some context? That shit sounds yeah, of like a, like we do drugs all the time. No, so we 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 don't, we almost never do drugs. Um, but rarely. Uh, the word is rarely. Rarely, which is almost never. True. So we almost never do drugs, and uh, but we always have ecstasy ready at home somewhere. <laughs> no, we don't. No, we don't. Okay. But we never do drugs. Um, <laughs> You're changing it. So when when we were when we we're in our really dark dark place. Uh, me and Marbury we realized we need to have an intensive away from work, away from friends, like arrow pulling session before we knew the term arrows and really like dig deep and see what the hell's going on. And um, one of the things that really helped me in high school because I'm so emotionally stunted was ecstasy and ecstasy. One thing that helped you in high school? Yeah. Okay. And ecstasy, uh, the original intention for the invention is to help psychopaths and sociopaths feel something. So it's a, it's a drug that really helps you empathize yeah. and really helps you break down walls so you can relate to people and the humanity of people. Yeah. And so one thing that I realized um, while on it was the reason why I'm even into a bunch of like alpha male type shit, like lifting extreme weights, pushing myself to the limits, running at 5 a.m. in the morning when no one's looking. Um, like I was training my fucking ass off before the ground was around. Like I didn't, I wasn't doing it for and fame or fucking, for people. And the voice in your head was wild from what you shared. Yeah. It was like, you're going to be a little bitch today. Oh, you're going to miss a set while well, here. You're going to do five more. Like you punish yourself. Yeah. Like, or even when I broke my foot doing backflips and I did like <laughs> five more backflips because my foot was being a little bitch. And I realized that came from when I was 13. Um, there's, I was fucking around with two cats in my junior high and uh, two literal cats no two people oh i'm like where the fucking cats come from, <laughs> from two people in junior high <laughs> and um we're just messing around but for some reason they took it seriously like we're supposed to fight or something and i'm a goofball like if you look at through all my yearbooks i'm always most humorous most talkative most comedic and somehow they took it seriously and they came to my house two dudes and i remember we all looked like i was a, a late bloomer so i was probably four six because I, I remember my junior high pe certificate and then they came to my house and they're probably like five, three, which is ginormous to me. Deep voices, jo like pronounced jaw, Adam's apple all popping and shit. And I remember they banging on the door and I go look and I'm like, and they're like, we'll fuck you up. And I'm like, what the fuck? How the fuck did they even find out where I live? How did they even know that your parents weren't there? I don't know. I mean, they just came and just, I don't know. When you're a junior high, you don't give a shit. Like they, they say trigger pullers are most likely 13 to 14. Yeah. There's no consequences. Okay. The older you get, like gangsters, they go, oh, I don't want to go to jail. And they actually just pull it out. They don't really shoot. But the shooters are usually, the game bangers are usually 13 to 14. Um, so I remember being so scared. All the hair on the back of my neck, my skin stood up. I didn't know what to do. Um, the... The me today would open the door and run out and go, I'm going to fucking die today. Let's fucking do it. 
But the me of back then, I jumped behind the couch, ducked under the couch with my hands over my head like I was doing an earthquake drill. And I can hear them because we had gravel in front of our uh, front window where our birds of paradise were planted. And I can hear them like stepping on the gravel, trying to look through look through there and they go, we know someone's home because I was watching Spider-Man. And then so they could, they could see <laughs> Spider-Man on the TV. Spider-Man, Spider-Man. <laughs> yeah. And so they, they, can, they can see someone hiding. They can't see someone hiding, but they know someone's home because the TV's on. And they kept throwing the gravel, the rocks at the window. They kept banging on it and I was fucking scared. I was so fucking scared that I called my mom and I'm like, hey, I know I have like this math tutor thing to go to later. I need someone to come pick me up. I can't ride my bike normally. And then so adult male had to come. But by the time he came, they already left. And I remember feeling like such a scared little bitch. Um, You're just like really disappointed in yourself. Yeah, I just couldn't believe I did that. You know, like I, I grew up doing martial arts and kung fu. And there's oh, you always, could have easily kicked their ass. No, nah, I don't think so. Okay. But there's like honor. So yeah, there's like a, there's like a honor. There's tolerance. There's these values, integrity, all these things. And my mom, like something that she always ingrained in me as a kid was uh, called Wen Wu Swang Chun, which means like back then in the day, like the warriors and generals always were just as scholarly as they were warrior like. And when you have both and you're a complete man. So that was something I always strive for. You know, even if I got did bad in school, I'm like, fuck, there's like, I'm dropping the scholarly side or I'm dropping the warrior side. And I really let myself down and I felt so bad. So I think from that point on, it became a part of me to really need to regain back all of the quote unquote manhood that I lost. Yeah. And that's something that plagued me till this day. And it, what if you just find them now and then you just fuck them up? And it's say not thanks. the same. It's kind of like, oh, fine. It's not the same. And I'm kidding, obviously, but yeah. Because I've seen them before. Oh, really? I've seen them, I think, either in early 20s or late 20s. I think, I forgot what it was, but I was back in Cerritos for an event. And then I think we went to go eat at a place at Guppies. Me or and something. you? You were there. What? Uh, we were at, we went and to you go, never told me. I know, because I didn't even... I didn't even know it's just that that so that part was so like ingrained in me you know like we mm -hmm. build up our own walls and there's like 70 layers of walls that I need to break down and then um I remember seeing them at one of them at the restaurant and this fool looks like a ajashi now like like a straight fucking like a, geezer yeah. yeah like a pot belly Korean golfer yeah and I saw that fool and I'm like oh my god like I could get him to get on his knees and suck my dick right now if I wanted to but knowing that doesn't make me feel any better Cause I was still a bitch from back in the, it was that moment that mattered. It doesn't matter yeah. what happens now. That was the moment that I pushed out. And so, um, yeah, I felt, I felt so bad and that it was an arrow with myself. Yeah. And that's something that I think like, that's probably one of the reasons why, you know, when we get into fights and stuff and when you call me a bitch, I never call you, you never a do. bitch while we're fighting. You never do. Once in a while you do. I never call you a bitch while we're fighting. There was one time you called me a bitch and it really hurt me. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. When was it? What were we doing? It was the one time. It was during the dark period. We were so fucking pissed at each other. And remember, I was telling you, like, this pain hurts so much. I want to take this gun and shoot myself in the leg with it. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then you called me a bitch. Yeah. I was, I was like, that's a bitch move. And then I was like, fuck, I am a fucking bitch. I was a fucking 13-year-old <laughs> bitch. I'm a bitch again. What the fuck? I'm so sorry. Yeah, and you're supposed to have my back. And then you call me a bitch again. So that, I'm sorry. that hurt so Does deep. Does it still hurt you? Uh, no, because it was a bitch move. Okay. Like, like not. But I'm sorry. That, thank and you. we were really bad. Yeah. That's so just, I, I think I was just trying to be like, really? Really, dude? You're going to take an easy way out, you fucking bitch? Yeah. I'm sorry. I know. But that was just my end capability to grapple with an emotional fight. So it's yeah. easier to go the physical route. Yeah. And so that was, um, you know, like those things really dictate it. But I think once I was able to release that and a lot of my need to want to beat the fuck out of people started going away. Like recently I realized like, um, you know, back in the day I always me and the homies would go to clubs and look for fights on purpose. And then even more recently, two years ago, when I started training with Ron, I really wanted to do an amateur fight to really like prove myself, you know? But I think like as our friends go through dark times and we pull arrows with them and as we constantly still pull arrows, as I pull them out, like I start to realize I don't really have anything to prove. You don't. No. So like the amateur fight, that's why now I'm like, I don't know if I need to do it. I don't know if I do it, if it's going to make me any happier yeah, or if I feel manlier. 
Because what I really like about martial arts is actually the fight with yourself. So when you're pushed to the brink and where you want to quit, but you go even more. And then also when I'm like just trading with my friends and messing around and strategizing, like I really just like that part of it. You know, like when we go, it's like playing pickup games. Yeah. Like, or pick up volleyball. Like that's the fun part. Actually being in a league and then competing and having a ref being beep. No, this guy, the ball goes over here. Like, I think that might even take the fun out of it for, for me. You. Yeah. Ah. So now it's like, now I'm like, I don't know if I need to prove anything to anybody to, if I'd even need to do that. But that's my reasoning of why I want to do it. Other people that want to compete, uh, uh, there's tons of healthy, emotional people that um, aren't, and do that, that compete stuff. that yeah. aren't looking to prove anything. Yeah. That's just what they're passionate about. Yeah, because if I do it, I'm just doing it to just put my skills that I've been training for to the test. To and the I'm test, like, because yeah. this is the only time that you're going to be placed in a high intensity environment that everyone's on the exact same page taking it as seriously so so the game just becomes that much stronger because then yeah. if you just do a pickup game like there's probably a mom there that just wants to fuck around yeah. or there's a dad there that just learned how to play so everyone is in it for different reasons but when it comes to competitive um and people sign up and they want to compete it's yeah. just different mindset yeah but before we move on in the conversation i want to take a little bit break a little bit break. I want to mm -hmm. take a little break yeah. to hear from our sponsors. What up, guys? The support for this episode of Bailcast comes from Manscaped, who is the number one in men's below the belt grooming. And below? Below. Oh, below. Below. Got it. Which is also just shaving your nuts. and um, Which I'm a huge advocate of, please. Of nut shaving? And, and that whole area. Like manscaping? Yes, please. Yes. Um, so what's really cool is, I don't know if you guys ever tried shaving your nuts before, <laughs> but I've cut myself so many times. I've heard it. You, yeah, I scream, whether it's with a razor, with a clipper. Clippers. And I think it's because I've never had an actual like ball sack trimmer. Yeah, I'm, no, you buy, your, it's what he uses for his hair. Yeah, and I don't cut my own hair anymore, so I use that. And I think because of that, it's not made for extreme delicate, like, you know, bat-like skin. <laughs> <laughs> so I, with this one, it's completely redesigned, and I love the name too. It's called their Lawnmower 2.0. I love it. Has skin safe technology, so the trimmer won't snag your nuts because we all know it hurts. And then you go jump in the shower, and then it burns because you yeah. got the soap and the water. I've heard you use it, yeah. and zero. You've been like, whoa. Yeah, it's it's pretty freaking cool. So um, I highly, highly recommend it. They even have uh, this thing called the Crop Preserver. <laughs> I, I love their names. It's an anti-chafing ball deodorant and moisturizer. And the concept behind it is, if you're gonna put deodorant on your armpits anyways, and your balls are probably smelly, especially if you play sports and work out. You're always complaining about sticky balls. Yeah, why don't you put that on your body, on the smelliest, stickiest part? And right now you can get 20% off, plus free shipping with the code BAW, B-E-A-W, at manscaped.com get 20% off uh, and it comes with a free travel bag with the code bail b-e-a-w yes. at manscaped.com go check that out and you heard it first from this yes, hot ass please. mama right here that she loves clean a lot of women do nuts a lot of people do it doesn't necessarily mean you have to go baby bald no no like just trim it like give it a one i yeah. don't know is that is that right yeah, give it a that's, one that's a, that's or a, a zero it's a zero, zero you can it's close it, okay give it a one give it a yeah, one try it, it one. out Try a, a one, see if you would cut your balls. If not, if you want to go cleaner, go ahead. I personally like as clean as possible because the less hair you have, the bigger your dick looks. It does. Oh my God, it looks so big. Yeah. Okay, and we are back. Um, I felt that that intro, it felt like a Coast 103.5 type of, and yeah, here we have a letter and request from uh, Jenny, who misses her man. Well, was her tagline? Was it soft rock? I have no An idea. An R&B? No, right? Maybe. The soft rock doesn't sound right. I don't know. I only Coast. know. Now it fucked me up because I'm a 94 7. The way. That's all I'm thinking of now. That sounds pretty good. Everyone that's not in SoCal is like, what are you talking about? If you're not in SoCal, you're in wrong, Cal. <laughs> Damn, that's some deep stuff, though. And, and yeah, th this was all revealed when we were doing E. Yeah. I don't know if well, while I was on E, if I was more empathetic or I just felt the same way. But the only difference was all the, the what I would consider now while I'm not on E to be kind of conceited thoughts or 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 um, 
not so humble thoughts, that's when I was able to say those things. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say, is I think you've always been very empathetic and uh, quite emotionally intelligent, but the thing that made you dumb was your ego. <laughs> Give me an example. <laughs> <laughs> What's so funny? Because you just straight up said the shit that made you dumb. I'm well, like, well, because like, <laughs> I don't think I'm dumb. So anybody can be smart, right? No, wrong. Well, everyone is smart in their own way. Right. And you take someone that's a fucking the best painter in the world. You grab his dog and he fucking gut his ass and put all his intestines on the floor. And he, now go paint your, some, your best work. They're going to be and we'll probably draw like a fucking weird sad face. It's going to be the worst painting they've ever done. <laughs> I like how they're like the best artists in the world and they just draw a sad face. <laughs> yeah, like any, 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 no matter whose genius is there, you can, whenever they're stressed the fuck out um, and you hit them in their kryptonite, they're going to become the dumbest person you've ever met. Yeah. Anybody. True. True, anybody true. was like that. Yeah. So, um, well, I wasn't even saying that, though. I don't think I was calling myself dumb. No, I am. <laughs> <laughs> don't get it twisted, Gio. I'm calling you fucking dumb. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. So for me, I, my empathy is not there. Yeah. So I'm, I'm empathetically dumb. Yeah. So when I took E, it helped me relate and empathize, right? Yeah. Um, but for you, your empathy is there. It's actually very high. And your emotional yeah. intelligence is very high. Yeah. But the thing that's making you dumb or capping it is your ego. So I think with the E, what really helped it is it removed your ego, it removed the conceitedness, and now you don't have to fight with yourself. Well, no, that's what I'm saying, that I wasn't being, con like, it helped me be conceited or give these these statements that I would consider as not so humble and not so, um, but I mean, just conceited and not humble. You know, like I would say shit like, oh yeah, that person I made him my bitch on purpose or whatever, you know, yeah, where yeah. it's like, you're not supposed to say that shit because it's just not polite. You know, there's a, there's feelings at the other end that that human is feeling, but our inner, 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 inner thoughts that we don't share with anyone, um, that stay in our own head. Those thoughts were coming out as well is what I'm saying. But what's, what I'm saying is that those are coming out and it's even extreme honesty, which is good. Yeah. And, uh, no, what you kept saying was I'm dumb. Yeah, because it's good for you to be dumb. <laughs> okay, fine. Yeah, it's good for you to be dumb because the I'm more- I'm still trying to follow along in this logic. Because your, on, your honest self came out. Yeah. When people are too smart, like we have friends that are very logical, very smart, and it holds their relation the shit back. Yeah. Because they're trying to With dissect- anyone too. Yeah, they're trying to dissect things in a way where it's like- that's not how, that's not the right lens to put on. Well, it's dissecting while trying to maintain like happy, perfect, like Stedford wife type of yeah um, vibes. Yeah. So for you, I think being able to break that wall down, yeah. the more honest self was able to come out. Yeah, it was really dope because, and these are my arrows, right? Like growing up because I'm, I'm pretty, even saying shit like that is hard for me to say. Well, it was not so much now because I don't give a fuck, but Back in the day, like calling myself pretty was really like, it was hard. I would never do that just because I would get made fun of for that. Like, oh, what do you know? You're fucking pretty or, or you're so tall and pretty or you're so skinny and pretty. And I'm just like, wait, why are you capping me? Like, why is that? I'm like, isn't that good? Like what's going on? You so, were so, dumb. Why weren't you smiling from all those? Oh, uh, because the way people say it, like when you're little, them calling you a bartender because it sounds like Bart. That hurt your feelings. And you're yeah, just but like, I was like three. I know, but I'm just trying or to, that's three, an, ex like five. Yeah, that's an, ex you're probably eight, but that's an eight, extreme eight, eight, eight. example. Yeah. That's an extreme example. But, but girls that you like, you admire and you kind of look up to, or they're your friends. Like, you know, you're just like, damn, like, I thought that was a good thing. Why are you making fun of me? Cause of that, you know? And, and like your opinion is not valid now because you don't, you can't like relate, relate to that. To them, yeah. And it's like, well, I can relate in my own way. Like what yeah. the fuck is up with that? That's so, what I feel about, feel bad about some white people. You know, a lot of minorities are like, oh, you and your white privilege. Right, and you're right. like, I'm like, yeah, but they still go through trouble. Yeah. Maybe they're fucking, maybe they knew who their dad was their whole life, but it doesn't mean like they've never been in, in a bad time before. Yeah, I mean, I think that's just lazy thinking. Yeah. Um, and and every and everyone goes through that, but yeah, I definitely carry my own arrows. I mean, we all do, right? Yeah. But when I was on E, and just obviously with maturity and life experience, I was 
just able to go like, oh, fuck. Like, this is why I behave this way. Or this is why I talk to Papa like this. Or, you know, he, he like puts me down. So this is my me building up these walls, trying to pretend like I'm a badass. But inside, I'm just fucking crying about everything. Mm -hmm. um, and And I hate that I'm such an advocate right now for fucking E. But that really helped. It definitely helped our... I don't even think there's anything wrong with advocating for E because it was actually a medication. It's just party people got a hold of it and started stamping it with cute things on it. Yeah, and abusing it. I mean, I guess the same with alcohol, right? I mean, it was never brought about as medication. And then also the street guys also started adding a bunch of like like meth into it and like coke and like mixing it with stuff. So it, it turned into some crazy stuff. But the actual MDMA part of it was made to... It's like um like DMT is meant to like be uh help with psychotherapy. Yeah. No, but it definitely helped. I was able to self-reflect. And I think the thing that really helped me the most um was the fact that when we were doing it, it was such a non-judgmental space. So it made me feel so free and so open that I was just like, I'm going to give you everything. And at this point, you can decide if you want to be with me or not. I'm like, I'm going to give you all the ugly <laughs> and I gave you everything. And then at that point you gave me everything and I'm like, holy shit, this is tight. Like we literally showed each other our assholes. That's awesome. Yeah. I think going back to the arrows conversation, one thing that Steve stressed that that was so dope is, um, once you really, really pull those arrows out, you can't, uh, ever bring them back break up. Them, Cause then it defeats the whole purpose. Of yeah. It. Never. Cause uh, I remember one thing that I did repeatedly over and over again was, um, you don't want, like when I call you bitch. And then every single time I, when I get fucking pissed, I call you bitch in our fights. And then, uh, but my mind, the way my mind justified it was saying that you are acting like a bitch. I'm calling you a bitch or you piss me the fuck off. So this is why I'm calling you a bitch, but that should never be okay. And I learned through Steve that um, when you actually love someone, like there's these boundaries that you're supposed to keep everything outside of those boundaries, those type of the type of feelings that I was like, yeah, then that's right. And so because you so you're trying that, to purposely hurt me, I mean, I'm not purposely hurting you, but in the moment, my ego is, you know, it's trying to go like, oh, I know you don't like bitch. Blah, 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 bitch. And you're trying to say it in a certain way. Yeah. And I think that's, that's, that's very alarming. And then when you ever catch yourself doing that, you really got to hold yourself uh, back and, and go, if I love someone, I shouldn't be doing these things. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then you can't go back on those arrows. Yeah. And just kind of speaking for my own experiences, I'll have that thought in my head. This is in the past. I don't do that anymore just because I've, I know better. So I do better. Yeah. My Angelo. Anyway. <clears throat> oh, cool. <clears throat> so, yeah, back in the day when I would do that, my mind would be like, that's really fucked up. Don't do it. Or even before I say it, my mind's like, don't say it, Gio. You know what's going to happen? Don't say it, Gio. It's going to fuck it up. Don't do it, Gio. Don't do it. And I'm like, I'm going to fucking do it. And I press the button. Yeah. Because I'm like the ego part of it. I want to feed that. I want to feel better. I want to be like, okay, you hurt me. So I hurt you. Yeah. Yeah. Like, here's a taste of your own medicine. But that's not love. It's not. But the way I would justify it, I was like, well, if he loved me, why would he say that to me in the first place? Yeah. Right. But so I fucked up, too, by not making you feel love. Yeah. So that's why you put your love away. Yeah. Um, and yeah. And, and through all this experience and all like seeing our friends go through it and, and us going through it, you really do have to put your significant other on a pedestal mm -hmm. and you have to take the good in with the bad. Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah, like you were saying, I'm, I'm a bitch. Right. And, and sometimes you're a bitch. Mm -hmm. And we just kind of have to take it as, well, this is who Gio is. She's going to have her bitch moments. We're still going to love her the exact same way. We're not going to call her a bitch. Uh, we're just going to see what is the root of that. If she fucking snaps back and tries to bite me, all right, maybe she needs some space. <laughs> yeah. But we're never going to pull Gio off of that pedestal that we place her on. And the same with me with Bart. Like I, um, I've never called you a bitch instead. I never felt like you were a bitch. Thank you. Yeah. I see you now and I'm just so happy to see you. Whereas before I was like, ugh, here comes this stupid motherfucker. I fucking hate his ass. <laughs> I'm like, here he comes bitching about who knows what now, flapping his fucking gums. Like I was so fucking fed up with you. Like you looked ugly to me. Like your bad breath was like the worst shit I ever smelled in my fucking life. Like everything about you I hated. 
It was it was that bad. Same here. Oh, but I'm so cute. Not at that time. Damn it. That time I wanted to throw you out the window. <laughs> That's fucking funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was fucking bad. But now there's like nothing really wrong that you can do. Like there really isn't anything wrong that you can do. And if you do do it, now I know from our last episode, if you guys want to check that out. Um, now I know that I'm just being stressed or it's all about me. Yeah. Like that's how cool we've gotten. I know. And I can, and I, and I'm proud of myself that I'm able to read that too. I'm proud of that too. Cause you're just like, mama, you're not being that pleasant. Are you about to start your period? I'm like, yeah. Or I could feel that like you're not feeling good. So I try to like be a little bit softer, even though I had a rough day too. I try to be softer. I put myself away. Or I try to give you some space or like do something nice that I think you would like. What can I do then when I, when, cause I feel like I've been having a lot of rough days these days, <laughs> but like, and I think my way of figuring out if you had a rough day to see who gets more of the attention in the relationship at that point, yeah. I go, how was your day? <laughs> <laughs> you're trying to compare? Yeah. And then I'm just trying to <laughs> so see, funny. and then I'm trying to see who had it worse. Was it you or me? And then you're like, oh, it was pretty good. We had this revelation in our movie or whatever. And I'm like, okay, cool. I'm, uh. <laughs> Can I be honest? <clears throat> always. You should always be honest. We have okay. this no two worlds rule that we'll tell okay. you guys about later. I think why you've been having all these rough days is you didn't do what you said you're going to do in the last podcast. What is that? Which is start training your ass off intensely, even if it's a short amount of time, 10 minutes. Yeah. I'm going to do it next week. That's what you said <laughs> last week in the last podcast. Because there's nothing refilling your endorphins. You're so right. I need to re-listen to that fucking podcast. Yeah, there's nothing in the morning. Ugh. There's no one. There's no uh, physical, extremely stressful <laughs> situation that you had to tackle and overcome. Yeah. Which in turn gives you endorphins. You're and, so right. And fuels you the whole, whole day. Yeah. And also, most importantly, you get... 20 minutes, 10 minutes or hour of extreme me time. Yeah. Well, cause when the minute Tycho wakes up, it's his time. It is. And the minute I come home, it's us time. Yeah. So, and I don't get my me time. You don't have yeah. So those three things, Yeah. you're not getting those, which is important for physical, emotional, mental health. You're so right. And I, that's really why I think it is. Like yesterday when he told me like, you know, like, why am I so tired? I already knew the answer. You're like, bitch, cause you don't fucking move. <laughs> well, when he knew it, I already knew the answer. But I was like, this isn't what she needs to hear right I now. I don't. You're I just so need, nice. I just need to support Ma Bear. And I go, Ma Bear, it's just because you, you've been mom all day. That was so nice. Yeah. And now I'm so receptive and open yeah. to you telling me I've been a lazy bitch. And I'm like, pumping yourself right. I'm not right. saying you're being a lazy bitch. I just think you need, <laughs> That's to, how I'm taking you it need to push yourself a little in a bit. In way. Uh, wake up with me. Yeah. Go do some sprints or something just for even 10 minutes, 20 minutes, whatever. Yeah. And then... Go take a shower, wash all that bullshit off. You're going to feel great. Yeah. Because honestly, my day was probably the same as yours. Yeah. And and I only report the good parts because my uh, my ability to handle bullshit is so high. Yeah, because you you had you. But time. I probably had the same amount of bullshit you did. Yeah. Well, I think I think health and mindset and all of that is perfect to pause right now to um, talk about our final sponsor. All right, and our final sponsor is Noom. I freaking love Noom because it takes the guesswork and it takes the research off of trying to lose weight. Like most people are trying to lose weight. They're like, okay, you're telling me I got to do nutrition. You're telling me I got to work out. You're telling Where me I got to start. Yeah, I got to track my meals. I got to get a coach and all that stuff. What's this body weight thing? I gotta weigh how my, much is it going to cost me? I got to weigh my food. Like, what is all this crazy stuff? Noom is an app that it just starts off with a very simple questionnaire. How much do you weigh? How much do you want to weigh? How many times a day do you work out? How strenuous is your uh, is your job? And it takes all that out and it produces an algorithm and it spits you back out a workout that you should that I mean that you should do your meal plans, all of that stuff. And it has built-in calorie trackers, it has built-in meal plans. It's amazing. And it's treating it from a very cognitive behavioral point of view, so it's not addressing like oh, you're not working at hard enough. It's trying to make it into a lifestyle so that you can change everything because that is what it's going to take if you want to make some big changes. So I really love this. It makes it way simpler. And that way, instead of uh, usually that hump of getting towards your goals is all the research and the, and the stuff that you have to do. But now the hump is so low. You just get the app, you fill it out and it tells you what you do. And it's not about, oh, these food are off limits. It's like, no, you can have anything you want, but it's the amount. So I love this. 
Yeah, so right now they have a trial offer. Go to noom.com slash bail, B-E-A-W, noom.com slash bail, and it's probably gonna be one of the last weight loss programs that you'll need, and I, I, I love this, because I'm always about getting people better, getting people towards their physical fitness goals, and this is a very simplified way of doing it. And we're back. <laughs> I, gotta get, I gotta bring in a new intro for that. And we're back. No, I agree. You're so right. You're so right. You know what I'm going to do right now? What? I'm going to set an alarm to wake the fuck up. Not next week. Tomorrow. <clears throat> tomorrow. <laughs> God damn it. No, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it right now. Look, everyone watch. So my alarm is set to wake up at 730. I'm going to do. What's a good time? Six. Why don't you just take the class with me tomorrow? Ron comes earlier now. So it'll be 6.30 to 7.30. We'll wake up at 6. We'll put the baby monitor next to us. The minute that he makes some noise, you can cut out. But at least you'll have just some some good training in. It'll be fun. 6.30 to 7.30. Let me just do my own thing for now. Okay. And then then I'll meet you. I think that's my... um, what the deeper meaning is I really love doing stuff with you and I really wish you just hung out with me. Are you trying to make me feel guilty? No, that's just my vulnerable side of like okay. trying to invite you. That's um, all. I love training with you. I know and I appreciate that and I love that you want to do everything together yeah. and I've tried it already. It's just not my thing and I'm not, I'm, if you want me to fail, I'll do it. I and I'm not trying fail. And I just want to hang out with you. Right. And I'm not trying, then let's designate a date because if you really want to hang out with me, then we would have a date night. No, I want to hang out physically with you. How do we do that? Let's a date night, but we just do something physical. No, I'm, uh, what? Okay, what about this? What if I cancel my class with Ron tomorrow? Yeah. And we do hill sprints or something. Fine, we'll do that. But I'm just saying, if you really want to hang out with me, don't group me up with another thing. I see. Yeah, because then it's it's just like, oh, you want me to join your thing, and and there's nothing wrong with that. But when I'm trying, if I'm trying to get out of my own hole and yeah. then try to get the physical training in, yeah. the last thing that's going to motivate me is jumping in on your thing that I already am not a fan of. I see. I, I don't see it as a my thing because it's Ron's not my equal. You know what I mean? It's, it's but like, it's your sport. It's, it's like what me you going. Chose. It's me going like, hey, let's go take yoga. But then Ron is our yoga instructor because I can't do yoga by myself. Okay, check it out. So if I was like, I'm going to train in volleyball, right? And mm-hmm. I do it every Thursday or whatever. Yeah. Um, you're only going to gain so much from that volleyball because you're not really trying to do anything else with it. You know what I mean? So if no, I'm like, ju- I get jump fucking in. good. If I, if I start doing volleyball with you, I'll get fucking good. Yeah, in But here. then if you found out that now you have time and the scuba instructor or whatever is now teaching five minutes away from your house, would you drop the volleyball? Because now you have time to do scuba. No, I'm doing it. Whatever you're doing, I'm following you because I want to hang out with you so you, bad. Bullshit. You would probably be like, hey, mama, I really have fun uh, doing this with you and I fucking love it. And this is the best time, whatever. But this the scuba instructor that I really love is now just five minutes. Um, Do you think, would you be okay if I start doing that now on Thursdays instead? No. I can already hear the conversation. What I would do now, because the new, the new, the new papa, it would be would the, we'd do this. Hey, mama, uh, we did volleyball with you for a whole year now. Can we switch things and then you do scuba <laughs> with me for a year? And then after a year, I'll go back to doing whatever you want for a year. That's actually pretty fucking fair. Because I just want to be koala bears. I want to be two bears on top of each other. That's fucking cute as fuck. Now I feel like a complete asshole. Good. <laughs> <laughs> but we're also weird fucking people. Cause I'm, I'm cause honestly, if you want to get with that fucking the most bullshit Olympic sport where they have broomsticks on ice skates, if you <laughs> all the people <laughs> listening right now, the Olympians are like, hey, what the fuck? What is that called? The, Shuffleboard? I don't know. They're Wait, just fucking chipping away at the ice. <laughs> they're just brushing it. If you, they they do that on the East Coast every time it snows, everyone's a professional at the driveway. That's nothing special. You fucking dissed Olympians, dude. Yeah, the fucking the the worst ones. <laughs> But if you if if it's if you wanted to funny. do that and I knew we can get a good workout and elevate our heart rate, I would go do that with you for a whole year. Yeah. But I think it's also nice to have separate interests. It is nice. <laughs> it's really nice because then we get to bring more to the table. But Fine. Yeah. Let me just start on my own. Fine. What are you going to do tomorrow then? I'm going to run. Why was there a pout? Well, I was I was kind of sad at first. <laughs> what? <laughs> Why? Because, well... We couldn't do something together. So that was sad. <laughs> but then I was like, but my bear likes it. So I was like, Fine. I hate running. That's how I'm going to start with running. <laughs> you hate running? You're gonna start yeah. with, then why don't you start with fighting? <laughs> you hate fighting too. <laughs> I think I, I don't hate it that much. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand your brain at all. <laughs> I just want to run, okay? Okay, fine. Just get off my fucking back. Fine. But yeah, that's what I do when I try to figure out like. What are you going to do in the morning? 
Yeah, I already set my alarm. I'm so proud of you. I'm proud yeah. of you already. Mm. That's one step. That's better than last week. Last week you said you're going to do something. Seven days went by and nothing happened. All right, dude. <laughs> <laughs> but you're a busy mom, mom, bro. You're a busy mom. That's why you're so tired and stuff. I can't wait to take this to school because then after school I'm going to be like all the other moms and I'm going to start working out. Dude. All right, you're going to wait five years. <laughs> I was kidding. Oh, fine. God damn. God damn. <laughs> That's Taika, yeah. <laughs> Taika's doing that now. No, but um, yeah. So the E was a factor in the opening up. But the, and I saw this firsthand when our friends were going through this, that just creating a non-judgmental environment and trust and saying, hey, anything you share with me right now, I'm not going to react to it. I'm not going to yuck your yum. You guys have to watch our Hey Bitch podcast um, releasing at the end of June. Sorry, this is a fucking, Ooh. this is a plug. Yeah. Uh, because. You better pay us a sponsor. Okay, fine. I'll pay you. Thank you. <laughs> I'll pay you with the sex. No, I can't buy anything with that. <laughs> um, but yeah, we talk about yucking someone's yum. So yeah, so so don't react to it. Don't take it personal. Don't yuck their yum. Don't be like, oh, you like doing that. Like that's judgmental. But it's hard. It's judgmental. Did you know it's actually really hard to not be judgmental? Because people are judgmental. You have to. E- it's survival. Without it's survival. Even knowing. I know. And and it's it's just pl- it's just it's their we're own, created yeah, that it's way. It's their own arrows that created their own securities that, that they're projecting and they don't even know. Like, for example, like when we dogs fr- do it, though, like when I first started, like, 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 let's say I'm like, hey, dad, I want, of course, my dad loves me like unconditionally. Right. He'll do anything. He'll sell his house for me and give me <clears throat> all the money. And I told my dad, hey, dad, I want to start a business. He goes, oh, man, it's going to fail. And you, it's if you but and then you're thinking, wait, I thought this was a safe space, but it's because of his inability to achieve high success. He's projecting his risks and what he wasn't able to do on top of me. Like we hear that so many times, right? right? And so it's it's hard. It really takes two to make a safe space. Okay, we'll do this. We'll do this. I'm not saying what you're saying is wrong. I agree. I I, I know you're not saying that. And I don't feel that way. I'm just saying it takes two people to be not judged. People Uh think only thing is just, it's just the judger. Yeah. It's the judger and the judgee. That's what I meant by the environment. So whoever's involved in this conversation, whether it's another person or it's your friend and it's a group of people, everyone has to go in with saying, I'm not going to judge you. And I think a safe way to do that is by just keeping your mouth shut. Just listen, let the person say their piece, keep your mouth shut and just, and this is the hard part, right? But what if they have an RBF like you? <laughs> Hold their hand. <laughs> okay, good. Because there's times where it's, it's supposed like, to be safe. Tell me something deep and secret and soft and vulnerable that you haven't shared. Fine. That I haven't shared? I've shared I everything. I don't know, just pretend. Okay. Um, I never told you this, but I don't like your soup. I accept you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if they saw because you had a There's angle. times where I'm literally telling her something. She goes, it's a safe place. Trust me. Because tell me anything you want. I love you so much. <laughs> and as I'm telling her, she's like. I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm trying. I think I listen too much with my yeah. face. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because I'm like really feeling it. And you do that a lot when you're watching movies. Because oh, yeah, you I get empathize. so absorbed. Yeah, I'm And I see you like and like crazy. your tongue is moving because like you're trying to word what you just heard so you're just like this you're like <laughs> and I'm just I I could watch you watch a movie and it's so like look at what you have the face you're doing right now you're like, <laughs> I empathize like crazy I do the same thing that's why thing. I cry all the time every movie I cry you didn't do that before you know that what yeah you didn't do that before I cried in all the movies ever since I was a kid no, nah, you didn't do that before. I cried you in do blood it sport. so much now, and I'm like, really? Are you crying right now? I cry in blood sport and everything. <laughs> that was judgmental as fuck, but I'm kidding. That was judgmental. God damn. God damn. I judge. I mean, I cry in uh, blood sport. I cried in everything. <laughs> what the hell is that? <laughs> ah. Um. But what? What part can you possibly? Oh, when his friend dies. That's the only part I could think of in blood sport. No, no. Um. I break your. I break your. Fr- like when he broke his back, and he's like. You break my record, I break your back or some shit like that. Yeah, and then also there's a girlfriend breakup part and then he's sad and he's like, oh man, like I'm doing this for my fake Japanese dad. I'm not even Japanese. I'm American soldier, but I'm French. He said, wait, he said all that? I don't remember that in the movie. No, it's, it, they show it visually. 
Oh. Like he doesn't say it, but they show, there's a lot of montages because it's like 80s. So a lot of those montages, man, they hit me hard because she's thinking about it. And then he's like, he looks over and it's his enemy in the bus. He's like, oh! And then he looks over and it's disappeared again. It's like, those montages are good. That's fucking funny. That happens a lot too. What? Where you think you see someone that you, from your past and you're like, oh, and they're not there. That mainly happens with my papa. Oh. I don't want to, I know, I know. I don't want to make it sad. I'm sorry. Yeah. But That's that happens cute. with my dad all the time. I'm like, oh, not him. This cutie. Yeah. That happens with uh, Tyson all the time. Oh, really? Sometimes Meatloaf goes by and goes, oh, Tyson. And I'm like, nah, it's just Meatloaf. Stupid. <laughs> Get out of the fucking, stop Meatloaf. Yeah. No, but um, yeah, creating that safe space and just holding it in. Like if they go, hey, you know what? Um, I've jacked off to a friend of yours. Inside you're gonna be like, motherfucker, what? But then because you're like, you promise that you're gonna create a safe space, then your next move, this is chess now. Your next move right now is gonna be like, and genuinely feel this shit from your heart. And even if you need to take time, you need to like, okay, thank you for saying that. Immediately give them some positive reinforcement and then remove yourself, be level-headed and then reply. Yeah, it's like, okay, thank you so much for sharing that with me. What made you want to jack off to my friend? Yeah, really try to understand the deeper intention and feeling behind it. Yeah. I'm trying to remember what, what some stuff that I told you that I'm like, fuck. I'm going to feel so judged for this. I thought you were about to say, I was really trying to remember who you jacked off to, one of my friends. No, we. I probably had that. Con I probably asked you. Yeah. I'm like, did you ever jack off to any of our friends? And you're like, no, nah, that's fucking weird. That's fucking weird as fuck. For you. I can't jack off the people I know. It's Yeah, so that weird. is weird. It's really weird. Because yeah. then the next time I see them and then I'm like... I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm pretty real and I'm pretty open. So I can't, it's, it's, I can't even, I can't see someone and then imagine myself like with my hand around my dick and choking the shit out of it. And I'm, Ugh, that's weird. I don't like those weird associations. Yeah. It is very weird. Yeah. It's very weird. Um, so yeah, I remember asking you that and you were like, nah, that shit's weird. Yeah. Did I have anything? No, maybe. No. That the I was porn like, that you watch is weird as fuck. Yeah, it's pretty weird. But I accepted all of it. And if you want to reenact it, I don't care. Let's I think it's it. pretty fucking hot, though, because the body's just so perfect. Let's do it. Which one? The latex porn? Yeah. The latex porn and then how there's only holes on the mouth and the I pussy. I think that's so fucking hot, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I like that shit. Because you don't see anything. How I think you don't want to reenact that kind of stuff? I do. I'm down. Okay. You're going to buy down. a latex but, suit? But It looks so uncomfortable. It's like you're it does, sweating inside. But it's just so like... It's so not normal. Yeah. It just seems like a big fantasy. Like it's just, it's not, like it shouldn't be happening in real time. It's not fantasy to me because anything can happen anytime, any day. What do you mean? Oh, like that could happen? Like to me. But like the proportions of. My, my, the things that can happen in my mind at any time. Yeah. I'm so open minded that it's not fantasy to me because I'm like, we just go to the store and buy that shit. Uh, well, no. The only thing that we can't do. It is do, fantasy to me because the person wearing it. Like the ratio is just like for what I like. So the girl has far. like so the girl has really big titties, like really big You're titties. Not far away. And I think she does waist training and shit. So like she binds. Yeah, she looks her, like a Barbie doll. She winds. She binds her waist to be really small, so her organs are probably all fucked up. Yeah. Um, and she like wears it, so she's really tiny. And then she got like a, a booty implant, I think. And so her ass is big. And then she got like lip injection. So her I'm really painting a fucked up picture, but yeah, she looks like a Barbie. Yeah. And then she has like the fake. She eyelashes. looks like a blow up doll in flesh. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I think, I mean, only certain people, like it's a very small percentage of anyone that can look like that and rock it, rock it that way. You can do it. Thank you. Yeah. I think I would need bigger titties for my own, my own desires. Maybe. Yeah. That's what I was always saying too, or I keep saying like pretty soon I'm either going to take out my implants or go bigger. It's such an extreme thing. They're yeah. pretty big already. I don't know. I don't know if they're that big. I'm pretty tall. I'm 5'11", so they look proportional to my body. They do. They do look proportional. I don't look, I don't look big. Yeah, you don't look like a, a, like a go-go dancer where it's like they're like about to tip over any time. Yeah, I'm, I have double Ds. You have double Ds? Yeah. Damn. That's crazy. I know. That's true. You are 5'11". I'm 5'11", but if I was like 5'2 and I had double Ds, I would look like I'm, I have Zs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But yeah, when I, when I showed you, when I told you, that's why I was able to tell you about it. Yeah. Cause you made me feel really comfortable. Yeah. That was something that you did in the beginning that helped me a lot. You made me feel like when we first got together, 
I was just like, holy fuck. Not only do I feel like this guy is my soulmate, but he accepts everything about me. Like, um, you you didn't mind that I showed my midriff? You like were like, damn, that's fucking hot. That was like, hot. Yeah, but I've been in relationships and just my family I, and just I, uh, all of that. That was actually a huge turn on because not many people can but rock then a, a lot of But then a lot of guys are like, no, that's just for me only. Like, cover that shit. Are you a slut? You trying to get more attention from other people? You know how hard it is to rock a midriff? Because everyone has that, um, what is that called? Everyone has that skinny fat. Yeah, that's so you, me right now. So you can't really rock a midriff, but you can rock it. Thank you. Even now? Uh, it's not as good as before. <laughs> <laughs> but, before but I still uh, fucking rock before, it. But before it's really good. Yeah. You well, to you your standards. Because you don't have that little pouch. To your standards. The pouch that I got because I made your son, Bart. No, the pouch that you got because you didn't run for a week that you said <laughs> anymore. <laughs> I knew that shit was coming. You know, that comment in the past, though, would fucking obliterate me. Yeah. Because I just want to be so loved by you that like. I love your guts. Now I know that because we went through our dark patch and all of it was revealed. And I just like you made me feel. okay. so in the beginning, you made me feel so secure about myself. I felt like I was the hottest girl in the world in your eyes. I felt like I was the smartest, the hottest, even though like. The logical side would take over and I'm like, obviously I know I'm not, right? Like I know I'm not these things, but the fact that I felt like you thought that and and hopefully I made you feel the same way because I was just like, God damn, you're the fucking hottest, the smartest, whatever. Like I just felt so free to be me and not judged. Um, and then after the whole darkness and stuff, like I feel that now with you. I feel like you think I'm the fucking coolest, baddest, fucking awesomest smartest anything that when you make comments about me being fat now i'm just which i'm not fat like we both know we're, i'm not fat um but like that pudge comment pooch <clears throat> what the fuck did i say pudge <laughs> pudge works too we Fine. can it, we could we could put pudge in there um yeah i don't feel sad i'm not like because i you've told me how hot i am a lot yeah you're mm. very hot and that helps because before you weren't that guy I'm sorry. I think you said that in your head. Yeah. I'm not good. I'm not good at connecting my brain to You're my mouth. You're good now. You've been practicing so much. I'm getting better, but I still don't think I'm that good. <clears throat> but hey, we're one step at a time. Like, we took a shower together, and then, I'm not going to lie, I was trying to be a little bit, so I was washing my hair, and on purpose, I would try to go slow, and I would try not to make a face, because you know how the water runs in your your eyes? So you can, like, do the movie thing where it just, like, kind of runs, or mm -hmm. you can do the, like, realistic thing where you're just, like, you don't want the shampoo in your eyes. Yeah, yet. so you're just like really trying to shut your eyes so that nothing gets in there. Yeah. But I was just trying to like stand up straighter and just like kind of do all that stuff. And it worked after. <laughs> or maybe it worked in the morning, but I mean at that moment, but I didn't hear it until after. But you didn't say anything. Because I was starstruck. I don't know how to Fine. explain but all that stuff. But then you said it the following day and I'm like, oh yeah, it worked. Because then he, <laughs> he sent me a text saying like, oh, I, I didn't get to tell you this because I just couldn't find the words. And then you revealed... I thought it was really hot and I'm like, ooh, I'm going to keep doing that. That was awesome. Thanks for sharing that. But you're, you're getting better. Yeah, you're welcome. And now that I shared it and you know it, I don't have to say it ever again because you know what's, but you know what's up. You better be joking. <laughs> Just kidding, bro. <laughs> I'm joking. Because <laughs> that, that, that honestly was my old philosophy. Like I didn't understand why you have to hear that thing. It's like I told you smart already once. That's it. You know you're smart. Okay, good. Moving on. But you don't even abide onto by the, that shit. Onto the new things. You don't even abide by it because you still want me to say I love you. You still want me to do all these other things. No, because you do the cancelers. So you say I love you, and then you're mean to me, and then I just cancel it out. So I'm no, like, oh, it doesn't. Okay. But not in my book because I'm still taking care of your finances. I'm still taking care of your laundry. I'm still taking care of all these other things. That shows you I love you. Barely. Ah, you see, you don't abide by your own shit. I do. Because you, you, so you oh, do. Oh, you're, you're gonna throw your ego into this. No, because you do all those things, and then you you're mean to me like. 50 times you do like 20 things and then you're mean to me 50 things it's probably reactionary it's probably all your fault Fine. i love all this thing that we just <laughs> said and we're going back to the ego thing I know. time to take e again guys <laughs> any excuse no, i'm just kidding no but we're better at that we're now. really good yeah we're fucking good yeah we take e so good now <laughs> not the e not i know the i'm e. just kidding no i think i think because so i think most relationships for the most part, if they're not living together, they can kind of like drag it out. You for, can run away from the problem for sure. a few years, yeah, right? Yeah. But then if they live together, they might be still able to drag it out, but not as long as we did. We dragged it out for like six years. I actually think one thing that hurt us was moving in too fast. 
No. Yeah, I didn't think that before. I never heard this. Yeah, I just thought about it recently because I think it's healthy to date and then you have time to, because anytime you're dating, it's like emotional warfare, whether it's good or bad, intellectual warfare is a lot. And I think it takes time to digest. And when you come back, you can revisit with a healthy mind and blank slate. And there's times to reset, 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 right? And it's a... It's almost like like working out. If someone that hasn't ran in a long time, run once a week, cool, twice a week, three times a week, four times a week, cool. Now let's go the long run. Let's do a half marathon, full marathon. Let's do, join an Olympic running camp because you're ready for it. Um, I think if you just started dating and you don't have time to reflect, then it's easy to start uh, things that take like a week to settle or you need to resolve, you're not able to and not just things just start building up. So a lot of our friends, I think, experienced that because they all moved in. Like Casey and Tiff moved in real quick. Jess and Joe moved in real quick. Like it, they, they, they moved in and I think it, it contributes. I'm not saying that's all, all the blame, but I think it contributes to not being able to resolve things because you're so, such, a, su- such in a, a honeymoon phase that everything looks glass half full and you're not able to resolve things in the way that you need to, in my opinion. I don't know. I don't know if I can agree with that. Because I felt the opposite. So for me, if we didn't live together, then I'm not faced with anything. Because as soon as I go and I do my own thing, then I'll justify it and I work it out in my own head by myself. That's not, uh, that's two worlds. I'm just saying, I'm just saying that's why I don't feel like it contributes, like, moving in is a factor like oh, too soon then maybe for me it is then <clears throat> maybe i think for me because i'm emotionally unintelligent yeah i think i need the time to process oh and i think i need the time to come back and find words oh no for me I- i'll justify it i figure it out because maybe i'm more emotionally intelligent than yeah. you and i'll be able to fix it not to say that it's right yeah and then i'll come up with the right conclusion but then if i don't if I don't talk about it ever again, I'm okay. I see. Yeah. For me, and it's that's like, bad. <laughs> for me, like, let's say we go on a date, right. And we stop by a kiosk and then I see you asking about cell phones and then you're talking to the cell phone sales guy a little bit friendlier and I'm still digesting why that felt weird. And then now we're already doing something else. And then in that thing, I see you hug like uh, your buddy you haven't seen in a long time, a little bit tighter. And then I'm like, that feels kind of weird. And it just starts layering. And then, um, you know, and, and then like, I don't even have the, I haven't even, I've built, it's like having 20 math problems put in front of you and you're still stuck on the first one. Yeah. First it's like, here, do this one, go home. I can come back and, and figure it out. I'm like, whether it's my fault, whether it's your fault. What is or, the, what is the, like you living together or not have anything to do with it? Why not just. Cause when you live with it, there's so many extra emotional situations now. Oh, like, okay, well let's go have dinner now. Or like, no, just like bathroom situation, bedroom situation. There's an a, a, a entire array of mm. things that can create emotional stimulation Yeah, that I need time to explain and share with you. But I'm just kind of like, I'm just constantly going at a pace that I can't even articulate and yeah. fi- fix. Well, I think that also comes with age, though. Because let's say, heaven forbid, and I don't even sweat this at all, but that's how confident I am about us. But let's say we break up. And when you get into a relationship, a new relationship, I don't think that you would mind moving in together right away because now you know and understand the concept of two worlds now. I, w- I wouldn't do it. Really? I, I really wouldn't do it. Oh, wow. Yeah. Because you would want to see how conflict resolution goes down or. Yeah. Like, I want to see how if things happen, like what it's like to date. What's it like to date openly? Like she knows I'm still dating three other chicks. What's it like to be more committed? What's it like to go on vacation together, like a week at a time? What's but with it, all without living together. Yeah. That's the last, last yeah, yeah, one. Yeah, 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 oh, yeah. Oh, that's very smart. Yeah. I think I just enjoy being in a relationship. You probably do. Cause like you were saying all this and we've had these conversations of like opening up our relationship, maybe in the future, who knows what the future holds, but I don't know. I don't know if I can. I go back and forth, right? I'm like, yeah, I'm progressive and like I can separate the two, but I don't know if I can ever do that. I like it. I like stability. I like um, 
to some degree, I like a lot of repetitiveness. Me too. I like stability and repetitiveness too. To the point, but I also don't know how realistic that is. Because it's to the point where I'm like, why do I need two cars? I'm only going to drive one. I should just get one car. But then I also picture myself driving one car and I'm like, nah, but I need, I need different feels. I need a sports car and an off-road car. And then when I'm doing that, then I'm like, wait, why do I even need two cars? I just keep going back and forth. Oh my God. Where do you think that comes from? I don't like these days. I've been thinking about like, man, my big ass truck and my big ass car takes up all this garage space. What if I had a forerunner or a Jeep, it'd be smaller. And then I'm like, but then all the turns that I take in the R7, so cool. <laughs> and then I'm like, well, that's cool. But you know, I just, I just keep going back and forth. I'm just talking about relationship for everything else in my life. I, I like fucking wild, wild west. I like going, woo, woo, no, woo. I, no, whatever, however I am in a in relationship, it's everything. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Oh, even, with, even with Taika. I'm like, man, I fucking love Taika. He's awesome. He's the best. I only want one. And then there's another side. I'm like, oh, but he's by himself. We should get two. And then I'm like, oh, but if we have two, then my loves can be spread apart. And I'll go, oh, I just want one, one. Damn, your mind is a interesting place to be in. How tiring. I know. So I don't know. Yeah, well, anyway. <laughs> I guess that's that's what makes it dope, right? That's what makes a relationship dope. It's just two different people bringing in their life experiences and their perspectives and stuff. And, and then we could really talk beautiful. about it without being judged. Right. And that's, okay, that's the last part that I want to talk about before we end this podcast is the concept that we came up with uh, when we were doing our relationship conflict resolution and 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 um patching all that up we were like you know what anytime because how i mentioned earlier where i'm like i'll go back home and i'll i'll um think of the problem and i'll work on it by myself in my own head it's like well wait a minute that's creating two worlds because then i'll come up with my own solution that might not even be right like if you yelled at me for being a bitch right then i'm gonna go back and be like well you know what he was having a very stressful day and you know, he was just being extra emotional where what probably really happened was, you know, you were not having a stressful day and it was just unwarranted, I don't know, fucking gum flapping for me that you're just like, man, this sucks. I already told her about this. I've told her about this thing time and time again, not to, I don't know, fucking, I don't know, blink that way. And she still keeps doing it. So it's like a deeper thing for you. Whereas for me, I just made it so small and I'm like, eh, it's just in past. He was just stressed and I don't learn anything from you. And then you never get to say your piece that might turn into an arrow. So then that's when the two worlds happen because I'm creating my own thing while this is what the truth is. So then we decided to say like, you know what? As soon as we're feeling something, we don't have to have the idea sorted out. We don't have to have a complete understanding of the situation. And we're just going to throw it on the table and then we'll fix it. So it's like, hey, you know what? You made me really sad. Do you know why I made you sad? No clue. All right. Well, let's talk about that. Yeah. Or if we even have like a thought like, hey, I saw this guy and I thought he was really hot. I thought I should just let you know. Yeah. Oh, why do you feel like you got to tell me? I don't know. I felt this type of way. Oh, shit. Okay. Let's talk about that. Yeah. You have nothing to say. Oh, am I right? Yeah. 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 You've, we've, we've done really good with that. I think so too. We talk about anything. Yeah. We even talk about, we talked about this in a previous podcast about the inner, 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 inner thoughts that you're not supposed to be, and not supposed to be, but that people don't want to say because it makes you sound like a fucking weird psycho. Like those thoughts of like you looking at your shit in the toilet bowl and then thinking, Hmm, I wonder what it feels like if I squeeze it. You're disgusting. <laughs> don't say you never thought kidding. about that. I'm just kidding. Yeah. But like those thoughts that you don't really want to tell anyone because they don't know your history. They don't if know. If I anything. have a four day weekend, I do it. <laughs> that drunk shit. Yeah. I think that thing for me disappeared once I had a dog and I had to pick up their shit. Like I grew up with dogs, but they had their dog but shit it's area. Different though. It's different. <laughs> What do you mean? Because when you when you want to pull it out of the water, it's like you you just caught a sea creature. It's a different. It's it's different. Please never do it. Please never. That's do what it. I'm saying. If I have a four day weekend, I'm gonna do it. Have you ever taken a shit in the shower? Uh, when I had diarrhea, yeah. But not by choice, like, like right? Like flu. it just kind of happened. 
Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Why you took a shit in the shower and you, <laughs> no, and, you flushed, fl- and you pushed it down the waffle drain? <gasps> no, no, no. I think I was on Instagram and I was scrolling about like, oh, what guy are you? The guy that takes a shit in the shower and oh, then presses God. it, or the guy that takes a shit in the shower picks it up and then puts it in the toilet. <laughs> why would? You, why are those the only two choices? <laughs> I don't know. That's just what the meme was. That made me think. Wait, Papa does some weird fucking shit. And then I was like, did you take a shit in the shower? I'm not gross. I do weird things, but I'm not gross. I don't know even know what you consider gross. Taking a shit and having hot water pretty much <laughs> amplify and cook and steam it. You're steaming shit is what's happening in the shower. <laughs> I'm not a shit steamer. That's disgusting. That's funny. Well, yeah. Any more? Uh, any last thoughts? Lots? No. Thoughts? Any last thoughts? <laughs> no. <laughs> Well, damn. Well, I hope that this gives you some sort of insight in just conflict resolution within your own relationship. Um, We find it to be very therapeutic to actually imagine these arrows in your heart and be like, okay, what 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 makes me sad and why am I still holding on to these memories? And then talking about those memories with your significant other. And and if you're the significant other receiving this information of these arrows that you put in there not by not on purpose whatever the reason was then you need to step up your game and be there for that person and listen to them have them say their piece don't get ready for the rebuttal Mm because that means you're just not listening just listen intently because they're not trying to hurt you and the person delivering the message don't be an asshole and try to hurt them like just show them your asshole and be like hey you know that one time that you um you drank all my pepsi you know, like that really hurt me. And then the person sh- receiving it should be like, well, you know what? I'm very sorry. That wasn't my intention. This is what actually happened on my end. And then the person has to say, you know what? I said my piece. I forgive you. And then you take turns back and forth and it's very therapeutic. If you want to drop the E, I mean, then drop the E, but you didn't hear it from us. <laughs> yeah. If you like our podcast, please communicate that to us. Let us know. Give us five stars. Um, Share it with your friends. Share it with your family. Share it with anyone. Uh, So, yeah. Thank you, guys. And thank you to our sponsors, Skillshare, Manscaped, and Noom. And Barbell Brigade. And Barbell Brigade. Definitely check them out. And we'll talk to you guys next week. Bye. Bye.